everybody, and welcome to the Disney Planning Insights Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about how we plan one day at Animal Kingdom. I think it's really important uh, to discuss, you know, planning these one day trips because a lot of people only take week vacations and they only have enough time to do one day at each park. So this is the Animal Kingdom version of that series. We, we've done one for Magic Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, Epcot, and now we're doing it for Animal Kingdom. So Peter, we're, we're getting up in the morning and normally Animal Kingdom's a relatively early day. I mean, you're talking about probably a seven o'clock or an eight o'clock opening yep. for the park. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how are you, how are you getting into the park? We're taking a bus. What are you doing when you get to the park? So normally on our days in Animal Kingdom, we're, we're gonna go one of two directions and it really depends on you know what we have organized for lunch and fast pass and everything. But uh, really, in my mind, there's only two right answers. And um, answer number one would be head straight for Kilimanjaro Safaris. Go get in that line before it gets long, before the animals go to bed. And then normally we'll come out of that and we'll rush over to Expedition Everest because even 30 minutes into the park being open, you can still ride Expedition Everest with about a 10, 15 minute standby line. Yeah. So that's where our day normally begins. And if I have a fast pass or whatever for Expedition or for uh, Kilimanjaro Safari a little bit later, then maybe we might go rushing off to Pandora to maybe ride, you know, Navi River Journey or something like that. But I would say most of our days in Animal Kingdom are Kilimanjaro Safari, hit up Everest, and that fills our first, let's say, hour or so from uh, when the park opens. What about you guys? Where do you guys head? So normally, I mean, you really didn't talk about breakfast, but for us, you know, we're either going to go to Tusker House first, and we're going to try and get one of those pre-park opening reservations, or we're going to hit that Starbucks right there before you get to the Africa Bridge over on the left side of Discovery Island. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're probably going to go to Kilimanjaro Safaris first, just because it is the best time to ride that ride. You know, we're putting all of our fast passes probably a little bit later in the day, probably right around our lunch, um, and trying to do Kilimanjaro Safaris, maybe Kali River Rapids, maybe get an F Expedition Everest in before we even hit our first fast pass. Um, so normally breakfast for you, do you guys do it outside the park? Um, on Animal Kingdom days, it kind of depends. That, like you mentioned previously, it's just, it's so early in the morning that a lot of times what we'll do is just kind of hit that Starbucks and we'll like Jesse and I'll share a drink and we'll maybe like grab a Frappuccino split in two for the kiddos and just a couple of pastries and we'll sort of eat those on our way to the ride line yeah. for Kilimanjaro Safari and just you just got to make sure it's done before you get on the ride because they're really big on uh, no food or drinks coming onto those van onto those ride vehicles for yeah. obvious reasons because yeah. they don't want them out in the uh, the Savannah area. Yeah. So, um, so you kind of mentioned eating at Tusker House. So, do we are we talking like early lunches, late lunches, and and where are you aiming for? So if we eat at Tusker House, we're definitely looking for a late lunch, um, and more than likely we're going to Rainforest Cafe right there at the front of the park. You know, we're going to get that back of the park pretty well knocked out in the morning. Work our way up to the front of the park for that Rainforest Cafe, and then we're going to start attacking Pandora. You know, hopefully we've got a uh, a flight of passage fast pass ready for us. If not, we're probably braving that line right after lunch, hoping that we're gonna miss some of the lunch crowd um, trying to ride that ride as well. So, you know, we're gonna go over there and then probably work our way back across to Dino Land um, to finish out the day. You know, with it being an early morning there, it's also an early close. So you're looking at a five, six or seven o'clock close on most days right now. So you know, Animal Kingdom days are really, what are you gonna do after you go to Animal Kingdom as well? So, you know, with you having that lighter breakfast, what are you guys aiming for for lunch? 
Yeah, a lot of times it kind of depends on what we are looking for, but Satuli Canteen is a pretty common occurrence for our family. Uh, love getting over to Satuli Canteen. I enjoy the unique, the unique drinks that you can't get anywhere else in any of the other parks. So being able to sit down at Satuli Canteen makes a lot of sense. As you kind of said, I try to build that around where I've got some return times or things like that built in for like flight of passage and, and and stuff like that and uh, you know outside of that the, another big thing that we really really make sure that we do during uh, you know standard times is try to find our way over to finding Nemo so I know you mentioned kind of Dino Land yeah. that's in my family that's our least important thing yeah. so if we get over and ride dinosaur okay if if not fine but as long as we get expedition everest both things in pandora kilimanjaro safari you know if we can get on kali river rapids cool normally i'm going to do that with a fast pass or something mm -hmm. i'm not going to brave that standby line that standby line is atrocious <laughs> most days so i would prefer to not ride it or ride it early in the morning if, mm -hmm. if I don't have a fast pass for that. So, um, so Tule Canteen is a big favorite. If we're there towards the later time, then yeah, you might see us find a, a Tiffin's or Hidden Flame Tree Barbecue for a, for a good meal in the evening. But um, fi uh, Finding Nemo the Musical is, is my favorite entertainment attraction there so we always try to find time to go get in line and wait for that and i know you are a big fan of the other show so i'm sure that's a, a must do during your day it is it is so a celebration of festival of the lion king which is the biggest word jumble in the world um is probably in my opinion the best show on walt disney world property um great great show and you know it gets you out of that Florida heat. I think when you're talking about doing these shows, we're talking about, you know, mid to late afternoon, trying to get out of that heat of the day and really just kind of wasting that 40 minutes watching a good quality show um, before we get into one of those longer lines. Because at that point, we've probably exhausted all of our fast passes. We're trying to get our fourth or our fifth fast pass at that point. Mm -hmm. And if we can't, we're, we're sitting in maybe a, a 30 minute Everest line or a 45 minute flight of passage line to ride it for our second or our third time of the day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that's a that's another really good point about Animal Kingdom that that maybe sometimes people lose sight of. If you let's say Animal Kingdom opens at 8 a.m., if you're on a bus at as the first buses roll out at 7 and you're getting to that park and whether you rush to Flight of Passage and then to Kilimanjaro Safari or you go to Kilimanjaro Safari and then Everest, you can realistically in the first hour, hour and a half of the day, knock out three or four mm -hmm. of the attractions. And if you're not gung-ho about Tough to be a Bug or the Up Bird Adventure or Dinosaur, you can also leave Animal Kingdom relatively early in the day as well to where you have time to go back for an afternoon swim, go over to Disney Springs for a nice dinner. You know, the Animal Kingdom days probably offer the most flexibility because you know, you can spend a whole day, don't get me wrong, because like we'll find after lunch, before we go running over to more thrill rides and stuff, we'll let our stomach settle by maybe hitting one of the jungle tracks, maybe mm -hmm. going to Gorilla Falls or Maharaja. And um, so you can fill the day up absolutely, especially if you mix in things like wilderness explorers and stuff. But um, you can also target Animal Kingdom and say, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna get this, 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 this. If you're like a ride junkie, you can get the ride portion of Animal Kingdom done by the early afternoon. Yeah, and the other thing that we like to tell a lot of clients is doing that on your out day, your getaway day, and going there in the morning and getting one of those later flights to where you get to enjoy most of the park before you have to get on your Tragical Express and go back to the airport. Yeah, that's a that's a really good point, especially if you're going for that quick trip that, you know, there for three nights, four days, or there for four nights, five days, and you're sitting there trying to balance things. You wouldn't want to go to somewhere like Epcot on your getaway day. Mm -hmm. It opens late. There's so much to see and do. And, and really, Epcot, 
in my mind, really becomes worthwhile as you slide into that later part of the, the night, like 6 p.m. and oh, beyond. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, th that's how we do Animal Kingdom in one day. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys have any questions, definitely reach out to us over on Facebook at DPI Podcast or at PATM Disney Travel, um, on Twitter at Disney Insights. And thank you guys for watching, listening, everything that you do. Um, and hopefully you have some enjoyment with one day at Animal Kingdom. You guys have all, all, all have a good day. Bye now.